recorded starting and uh, three two one welcome folks we are gathered here today uh no uh we and i mean we are going to do something that might be surprising we as in me and one other person is going to react to jennifer coffin daffer and I do know that uh, there are parts of my audience that has uh, issues with her uh, uh, opinions in uh, one specific case. But she has now started a YouTube channel and she has put out videos on the Delphi case. And uh, so I thought we would react to those videos. And with me, I mean... Me and Mo. Hello, Hello. Mo. Hello. Yeah, I'm yes. really interested. I've not watched a lot of her stuff or listened to a lot of her opinions, but I do know that she used to be former FBI. So, you know, yeah. maybe her saying, hey, this investigation was great or this investigation was foobar from beginning. People will listen to her more than they'll listen to, you know, a crazy redhead who likes Sailor Moon. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean sometimes even if you are a 180 on other subjects when yeah. they come come out with an opinion for uh, in this case the delphi case that might align that will be taken more seriously but not entirely sure yet i've only yeah. watched a couple of minutes of the first out of two videos she has released on the Delphi case. So, let's see here, uh, this one, there she is. This is from an 11 minute live session she did. Now she's just getting started on the YouTubes and okay. that kind of shows. Uh, <laughs> but we, all, we, we weren't great in the beginning either. I mean, go I, back and look to my first videos. Oh, it's crap. <laughs> I'm just working my way up to semi-competent. I'm just at yeah. dead awful right now. And I just want to be semi-competent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, uh, Mo, anytime you want me to stop, just okay. holler. And, uh, but let's, let's start. True crimers, welcome to break the case i'm going live again because the delphi case is really um so important uh this is a case that two girls were viciously murdered back in 2017 and just now are we hopefully going to see justice served in this case uh specifically for those of you not familiar Abby Williams and Libby German uh, were taking a walk on a day they had away from school on the Monon High Bridge, which was basically this bridge trellis that uh, were former train tracks. And um, there's a video that's very famous uh, that was made, uh, astutely made, uh, that concerned the individual that was trying uh, to apparently kidnap and murder them. And in that video, um, he basically says, guys, down the hill. Okay, this tells me she hasn't gone on a deep dive whatsoever because both me and Mo no. knows these are separate that the prosecution put together. The video... If it's even is, is a video, it might also be a series of photos Photo. rendered into a video. I'm not sure. Until it's presented in court, we don't know. But the uh, audio, that was later. So we really don't know who, if if those two are even connected. But Yeah. Uh, but it is, a, it is such a large case. Yeah. And the way things have been presented um, from the state side has not been very clear or very transparent to the point where you would know that unless you did a deep dive. So her just getting in, I don't fault her for 
not yeah, knowing no, that. And not. she she is coming from the part that we want justice for the girls, which I think is what everyone wants. We're just very yeah. concerned about how justice is going to come around. Yeah, I agree. And what's interesting, I think, for most of us in law enforcement is we thought this case would be would be solved quickly because the murder was caught on video. But that video has become so controversial. Uh, who is really on that video? Uh, early on in the case, about a month in, uh, the FBI got involved. Uh, they prepared a probable cause affidavit. And their belief was that, in fact, a man named Ron Logan, who had a property right there uh, by where the girls were found, uh, that he was uh, culpable. Why did they think that? There were multiple reasons they they thought that. First of all, um, he came up with an alibi during that time frame. And not only did he come up with an alibi and lie, he had somebody else lie on his behalf. That's very unusual. He was also a 60-year-old man. Yeah. With emphysema. Yeah, I mean yeah, uh, it, but she does make a good point. Uh, point. This is yeah. early on in the FBI's yeah. investigation. And I understand those who still, uh, Mr. I don't even remember his name. Logan. But now he has, Mr. Logan, yeah. he has passed. He is no longer yes. with us. And it seems like uh, no, not many went to his funeral. Just let's just say that. Not no. very many people went to his funeral. So, um, but uh, yeah, she, she's from yeah. the FBI. Uh, she's a former FBI. And her opinion about it kind of lends to, okay, what did the FBI do? So I understand her. Yeah. And I think that if she's working with what the FBI knew at that point, they hadn't released the, the cause of, of homicide. So, exactly. I mean, she might still be going on. It was a simple homicide. And I think that's mm. once yeah, you I'm, learn about the, the crime scene and everything else, it becomes very hard to imagine that one person could do this. Yeah, uh, I agree, especially a 60 year old with emphysema. I mean, uh, I'm not 60 yet, but I have uh, arthritis in both knees, and that is more or less equivalent with yeah, I you, there's some things you yeah. really can't do. And and I think he was prompted to give an alibi quickly because I think he was driving without a license. I believe yeah. that's when when the whole shenanigans so he made up this elaborate story about a friend driving him. Oh. I think he had been in trouble. I'll have to go back and look at my notes, yeah. but it was some uh, ridiculous might, reason. Uh, she, yeah, she might. She might go into time. that. Yeah. The reason that was purported by some was, well, he did that only because he, um, he he did not should not be driving on a suspended license. Nah, he had driven on a suspended license before. Uh, secondarily, the geofencing showed he was right there during the time of the murders, and then finally. There was also some really uh, horrible uh, information received by one of his old former girlfriends in terms of the violence and the uh, abuse, uh, sexual abuse and, and physical violence that she uh, suffered you, at his hands. So, YouTube, this is a reaction. This is not me yes. saying these words. Uh, <laughs> it certainly uh, showed, I guess police? you could say... Uh, were there any police reports of this alleged abuse and assault and all of that? Because it's very I, easy for partners to come out of the woodwork mm. 30 years later and say he was a total douche. I must say I have no idea. And uh, so it's a rumor or testimony, well, not yeah. sworn. I mean, but... I mean, they could have it and it could be totally legitimate. I just, yeah. 
Mm. We're in the um, age of post Me Too, where women have come out and said, "Oh, well, I made this mm. up because you know so and so was didn't date me." Or yeah, I mean, uh, this is 27. We are talking about the time span 2017 to 2021, before the Johnny Depp thing, when the yeah. evil women started to be really questionable. So, uh, yeah, so we have. To, the accounts that came out about him, we have to take in account this was on the height of Me, uh, Me Too movement. Can it be true? Yeah. Sure. And has it been proven in a court of law? I don't know. Maybe it has. We just don't know about it. And in the first press release, the cops were very insistent that, you know, if your partner has, you know, started crying, changed his mood, I mean, gotten mm. a haircut, done something else. So people were already heightened to look for mm. any sort of blip. And then, you know, maybe yeah. a girlfriend from the past thought, you know, well, this wasn't all too kosher to me. Mm. So, yeah. But this is a coffee duffer. So it's her show and we are reacting to it. Yeah. Um, the type of person that might be involved. Uh, so early on, they were looking at him uh, at... Uh, he ended up passing away and is dead now. And last uh, in October, Richard Allen, not this last October, but the previous October, Richard Allen was charged with the murder of Abby and Libby. Now, I just want to get into a couple of the details because it's now been disclosed. Um, specifically, these girls had their throats slashed one more viciously than the other, Libby's viciously, Abby's more smoothly. They were both made to undress or undressed each other or the killer undressed them. We don't yeah, know. Yeah, we can kiss monetization goodbye. Nude. Uh, <laughs> they were also uh, both moved from the murder That's location to a hiding <laughs> location, if you will, and they were covered by sticks. Also, interestingly... Yeah, maybe Miss Coffendaffer, Mrs. I don't know. Um, she, she. This is very early on. This is one of her first or something. She's only been doing this for a month or a month and a half. She might not yeah. be uh, monetized yet and haven't learned about how we rearrange words and say other words to keep monetization. Yeah. So yeah, but it's but kind I, of refreshing. It it is refreshing and it is. Putting the starkness to it, not having to dance around. I mean, what these girls went through was horrific. Yeah. And again, I think calls into question that one person could do this. I mean, it's not totally impossible, but you do have two subjects to subdue, yeah. um, to, and you know, uh, disrobe. One, and and what, uh, evidence of one being ended before the other. So probably yeah. watched it happen. And I mean, you, yeah, I mean, unless it's a serial killer type with yeah. experience, I, I, I recall the Jodi Aries case when you say she probably did not know how much blood a human body contains. And yeah. that is why it became so vicious with the stabby, stabby, shooty, shooty, slicey, slicey. I, this seems I mean, this as it, experienced, doesn't it? I mean, it's it, like yeah. they knew. I mean, you knew that you had to, you know, have a different area, let the blood go out. Then things would be relatively clean. You could redress and then pose. I mean, yeah. this is not a I mean, unless you had been fantasizing about this for years and yeah. Yeah, I just even, I don't see this as a first crime of a first person just no, coming out the gate exactly and that that is one of my pet peeves even if even with all the fantasies in the world you really can't i mean and i've been doing i've been saying this before i grew up around farms i have a farm i know how to uh, gr let's just say this an adult pig contains just about as much blood as a human being. And uh, if you slaughter a pig and you miss that bucket, the, yeah, 
it's everywhere and it's a lot of it you can't <laughs> you can't be prepared to it no and and that's where i think that it has to be someone that has experience either mm. with with hunting let's say you know and field dressing that way just because mm. you know okay this is what you have to do and you can kind of look at, at it clinically without getting twitter pated cuz I am not a blood person. I see blood, Mo goes down. Like, it's a good thing I I didn't finish that nursing degree. But um, yeah. Yeah, so I worked with law, you know, for over thirty years with uh, personal injuries <laughs> in the workplace. I mean, after the first fifty torn off uh, fingers and hands and limbs, you you kind of get immune to it. But uh, yeah. I'd have been the skinniest lawyer ever because they'd be like, oh, no, we got a, we got another hand. And I'd be like, oh, can't. <laughs> Don't <laughs> contaminate the crime scene, Mo. <laughs> I'd been like, oh, that looks off. Oh, God, no. Okay, I need a bucket. Thanks. Yeah. Please tell me that's a weave. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we are here to react to <laughs> Miss Coffee and Africa. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> Uh, this is about when I stopped uh, watching, because okay. here I saw where she leaned. Yeah. And I also seen her on the, the Twitter X questioning the some of the things in the Delphi case. And uh, But it so is nice is to have someone maybe disagree with some of your ideas, because you really have to question, okay, is it that I really just hate Judge Gull? Or do these yeah. things have merit? Two things exactly. can be true at the same time. Two I can really hate can... Judge Gull, and the state might have a point once in a while. Yeah. Libby was left nude while Abby was reclothed in Libby's clothes. Um, I've always found this very interesting because it almost seems like Abby was taken better care of, if you will, uh, during the crime and after the crime. I mean, obviously not taken care of, but treated differently. Let's just say it like that. Treated very differently. Which one of the girls was uh, the oldest son's girlfriend? I believe Liberty German was the, the girlfriend. And I believe that her mother they were upset and i could be wrong mm. i'll have to again look at my notes they were yeah. upset that she might be in a mixed race relationship yeah and she was the one that was left unclothed i believe yeah. and so they wanted to whoever did this wanted to humiliate and degrade one girl and yeah. not so much the other the other one just happened to be there in my opinion yeah yeah Th that kind of makes sense that one was collateral damage if Sadly. if we go by that theory uh, and for you who are if family to abby and libby watch this this is not for us to there's no disrespect here we want the truth in this case that's it because justice for abby and libby does not happen through prosecutional yeah. misconduct, through investigators' misconduct. It definitely can't be done if you, involuntarily or not, erase 70 days of evidence. Of, yeah, and and if the state has all the geofencing DNA and it shows, hey, Richard Allen, if they can prove to me, then I will be the first one to say, send him into the pit and don't let him out. Yeah. But there has been so much that has never happened in another trial in Indiana. Mm. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah. In any event, Richard Allen, who stands accused of the murder, what evidence is there right now? I'm what evidence that exists right now is, and I'll call this the smoking bullet. There was a bullet that was found. It wasn't immediately found, but it was found in and around uh, where the crime took place. And it's a full bullet. So it's not just a casing. In other words, the gun uh, that was used to expend that bullet 
was not fired. This would it be was interesting ejected, to see her take uh, on this one. Which is very interesting. Uh, and in any event, pursuant to a search warrant that was conducted at Richard Allen's home, according to a tool marks expert, the gun that was used to manually eject that projectile was Richard Allen. So that's sort of the smoking piece of evidence. But expect that certainly no, to be No, that's not uh, by experts. The, it's going to be a duel of the experts. Yeah. Uh, they said they couldn't they couldn't ex exclude I it. I, yeah, that, I think the language in the, the tool mark guys was couldn't exclude, which means any gun of that uh, type and stuff. Yeah. Can can also be not excluded. Yeah, but they but, but uh, people won't get that, and I wouldn't have gotten that until I learned it from different defense attorneys. How how very hit or mm. miss and word tricks that are used mm. in some of this um, forensic yeah. information. Yeah, I hope that Ian Runkle's uh, toolmark guy test becomes a reality. For you guys yes. who don't know about it, it is if a person claims to be a tool mark expert and who can, oh, this is uh, from that one, that person should con first conduct a test. You have five bags of 20 shell casings each. There could be one, five, two, or zero that match a specific gun. And you need to match them. For After that, that's a blind test. If you if they can do that, okay, you're good. Yeah. If they it's can't, just much more... then off you uh, off you go. Yeah, it's much more subjective than yeah. I originally thought. Yeah, I mean they more or less have the gun, and then they shoot from the gun, and then they compare that shell casings with the other shell casings which they thought is from that gun, and yeah, oh. I see that five out of seven scratch marks match. Okay, so it's not that one then. <laughs> no, five yeah, out humans of seven like is the a same match. patterns. Yeah, yeah, we do. But let's keep listening to see to hear her take on this. I believe. In addition, and this is after arrest. I, I really to go into all the details of the affidavit uh, that was used uh, to charge Richard Allen. I have a lot of questions and concerns regarding the eyewitnesses, regarding change statements, regarding people coming forward. To me, the only solid piece of evidence in that statement is this projectile. But since his incarceration, he has apparently confessed five total times to both his mother, I believe on one instance, and his wife on four different instances to being involved in the murder of Abby and Libby. This is big. Yeah, here's my take. There are tens of thousands of false confessions due to stress, due to anything. I mean, many cases has been thrown out due to forced confessions because people were just sat down in an interview cell and kept s sitting there because it, being left alone without anything for hours and hours and hours and then boom in they come we don't know yet how these so-called confessions what did he say what did he actually yeah. say was there anybody around we still have the odinist uh, prison guards yeah and a lot of mental that... stress he might that, have said, "I might just confess so we can get uh, uh, get this uh, over with." Okay, I will say it. I will say it. I did it. I did it. Just get me out of here. We don't know. And he asked multiple times his defense attorneys, "Were was his family safe?" Mm. I mean, we are. Yeah. To believe the confessions, you have to discount a lot of things that may be factors in why it happened. Mm -hmm. And we're only getting the, I hate how the prosecution or the state can leak things like the mm -hmm. confession, but if the defense does a memo or, you know, a presser, it's terrible and horrible. Mm -hmm. 
but they can leak things about like confessions and stuff. Yeah. And the, uh, we, the sources would have to be impeccable for me to believe yeah. them. And if they trot out these guards, I'm going to yeah. laugh. But we, yeah. I mean, we heard it in the Sakura Anderson case. We found Rosario's blood in the van. No, they didn't. They lied. And then in the murder case, his T-shirt was soaked in blood, said this blood spatter expert was uh, one of the officers uh, testified to, to the grand jury. That was false because the blood spatter guy hadn't even conducted his test yet. So we don't know yet. But and, th this yeah. is uh, uh, the first out of two videos from uh, Ms. Koffendeffer. The second one is two weeks later. Okay. So let's. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of, of stuff to take in. It, yeah. it really is. I mean, and if you start going by just surface articles, yeah. you know, local articles, you get a lot of the state side. It mm -hmm. isn't until you start digging down into different sources mm -hmm. that you start thinking, well, hey, now I am, mm -hmm. I'm getting a bit concerned. Exactly. But let's. Uh, finish this off so we can get to the second video she did okay. Okay. but what's also important to realize is he was incarcerated in a maximum security prison oh she got now, there this situation that he was put in is the most dire of situations in terms of incarceration meant for the most egregious and heinous offenders who have been convicted and this has always been something that has bothered me so People like Brian Koberger, who also is accused of committing a horrible crime. He is in a jail where he can get on a phone, where he can use a pad, where he can easily meet with his attorneys, God. where he gets plenty of rec time, where he gets to go to church, where he gets to manicure Reach his hair it. and his eyebrows and change into a suit. That is not, not, it's in fact the polar opposite of how Richard Allen has been treated. And fine, if he's convicted. I understand. Put it, lock him away. Give him the worst uh, conditions possible. But he stands innocent. And like all who stand innocent pre-trial, he should be housed in a jail facility. Why isn't he? Well, it was purported, which I find complete nonsense, that there was no county jail that could house him. That's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. All Did right. We become best friends? I mean. Damn, that was. But, um. Smack, Mac. I know. I thought. I thought maybe we would maybe not be best friends with the penny problem glasses, but oh my goodness! At least on this case. At least on this case. At least on this <laughs> issue in this case so far. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Complete <laughs> nonsense. That's harsh from a former yes. FBI agent. <laughs> <laughs> there are dozens of county jails. They all have the proper facilities to put someone in isolation and to spend the money they are spending on this contract to put him in a maximum facility is outrageous when a county facility would have uh, enabled Richard Allen to more easily meet with his defense attorneys. Uh, it's almost been, it's been almost ridiculous. I mean, he is in a cell. Uh, there's no conference rooms that were able to be utilized. At least this is according to uh, the interim uh, defense team that was put on after Baldwin and Rossi were sort of forced to get off, but the Supreme Court of Indiana uh, ruled that they should be able to come back on the case. Yeah. It, two pairs of lawyers agreed. And yes. Ms. Koffendaffer agrees. Okay. So the reason I wanted to come live today is today is a big hearing. It's a hearing concerning sanctions and, and contempt charges that could be levied in this matter, as well as new charges of kidnapping. Now, what I find okay. interesting yeah, about these new charges ago. of kidnapping against Richard Allen is it's well over a year after his arrest. Well over a year after his arrest. There's no new information. There's no uh, additional uh, clues uh, or information uh, that has been that anybody has been made aware of in the court filing. So they essentially have said, though, that the evidence uh, also shows kidnapping. Then file it early on. It just looks bad. It makes them look like they were either very confused about the statute and the law and what they were charging or that they're kind of 
piling on now because they're con concerned that they're not going to be able to make the murder charge. And I would argue the latter. I think because oh. of all the information that has come out, I think they're very concerned. Are they going to be able to prove that Richard Allen put that knife on the neck of Abby and the knife on the neck of Libby? All right, true crimers. Uh, love to cuss and discuss. Can't wait to read any comments you might have. And uh, I will. Okay. Very interesting. I that mean, was... I, I'm the, the last shocked. five minutes here. Damn. You know, it is. It is very comforting to know that someone else is seeing what we're seeing because sometimes I feel like we talk into the ether and my state is still screwed up to the nth degree. Yeah. And I mean, it's, I'm, a, I'm pleasantly surprised, but also how harsh she is. Because re remember, she's a former FBI agent who uh, also somehow works as a professional expert witness i would assume she was she would be much more pro state here but apparently I not think, <laughs> well i think it's if i were to guess i think she finds it professionally irritating yeah. that they are are so inept i mean this is giving both the fbi because they were involved in the beginning of this and then the unified command they are looking really bad, but I hadn't thought about them adding the kidnapping charge because they're worried they're not going to get the murder charge. Yeah, but I do think, I wonder if they haven't removed that again, because kidnapping is under the murder as well, but they added that as the secondary, but I do think they removed it. I'm not sure. I'll have to look. There's been so yeah. many filings, and it's <sighs> like every other day there's 17, and I'm thinking, mm. what are, wh where, what, who? Yeah. But let's see here. Let's go to the second. Now, this is a video. Apparently, she got <laughs> a bit more. She has an intro now. <laughs> let's just say that. Mm -hmm. She has an intro. Abby Williams, 13. Liberty German, 14. They were besties. They oogled over boys. They did everything with one another. And February 13th, 2017 wasn't any different. That day, they were off from school and they decided to walk the Monon High Bridge in the little town of Delphi, Indiana. But that day, they were met by Bridge Man. Bridge man either removed their clothes or made them remove their clothes and brutally caused them to lose their life at such a young age. This case wasn't solved until apparently about five years later. But was it solved? I like her intro. I do. True crimers, welcome to Break the Case. I'm your host. I'm Jen Coffin Dabber. I have over 28 years of federal law enforcement. Okay, uh, she got up to speed got quite fast in her video. I know. <laughs> that only it's only took taken a couple me of... six months, <laughs> and I still don't have a good intro. Way make us look bad, lady. Way make mm. us look bad. <laughs> but I, I do have my, I do have my middle finger octopus. So just in case, know, I may not it. have, I may not have a fancy FBI degree, but I have. I Weird have the flip off octopus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I like the intro just by she yes. saying, was it? Yes. So, uh, yeah, this is 26 minutes. And, yeah, let's go through it. Investigative. Oh, for you out there, I asked Miss uh, Coffin Daffer permission to react to these. Uh, because I reached out to her and I got a, yeah, I, so... Unless we <laughs> go haywire, I think we're safe. And if even though I still say this is fair use. 
experience, and I'm so excited to have you join the program. We cuss and we discuss true crime here. I'm going to have a take, and I hope you have a take too. I love to read the comments and welcome all your ideas, thoughts about the cases we discuss. So let's get going without any further ado. I want to talk today about Delphi. For those of you who don't follow Delphi, Delphi is a place in Indiana. It's a very small town. And in that small town, back in 2017, February 13th, two young girls who were besties lost their lives. Their lives were viciously, viciously taken from them. Their throats were cut, both of them, one more viciously than the other. They were made to undress. Their clothes were put in a nearby river and one of them was actually redressed. The bodies were killed in one area and moved to another and brush and limbs were put over top of them. In addition, a tree above them, there's blood on that tree. And in fact, some will argue that it was actually a ritualistic rune or symbol. Yeah, here's the thing. You can throw a lot of branches over people. Yeah. That is hard that is... to yeah. go random at. And, uh, yeah, especially when one of the runes is the Odin rune. That I argue that's no accident. And Mo has... Kids, go do your homework. Well, speaking of being an enforcer, you know, <laughs> one's like, I did half a page. Can I get a 10-minute break? I'm like, no. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> By the way, these are, uh, if you saw the picture earlier with the tree, that is one of the pictures that the defense are risking. Well, they were off the case for a while. Off the Yeah. But that picture had all, all if I remember correctly, that was already out from the state. So I think so. And this diagram here. Uh, has been, as far as I know, it has been public long before uh, the defense yeah. case, uh, defense lawyer's uh, former associate broke in. Well, and I think if you um, were aware of the knowledge that they had put out a subpoena on... <sighs> yeah. And water on two people's phones that they never went through on. Yeah. There was talk about how the girls were left already. Yeah. And I don't think it's a coincidence that two of the first people of persons of interest were Odinists. It ha I, you I, just I, don't, I just don't I mean call them in. Hey, how about these two? They have to have no. had something. And now we don't know what it is because the cops erased, not only did mistakenly or whatever, erase the interviews, they don't even have the notes. Now the FBI, one FBI agent have notes, but that doesn't, that, that's not evidence. And the no. other interview, apparently it was in the other person's home. And why wouldn't you yeah. record that? I don't, yeah. But let's uh, continue to yeah. see what she says. Of Odin, which is a white supremacist cult, religion, whatever you want to call it. These girls had the day off. and That specific offshoot called uh, Odin Brotherhood, that's a cult. It was uh, yeah. started in the mid-1990s by Mark Mirabello, who is a complete scam artist slightly fascist and i hope he get what he deserves uh they decided to go to the monan high bridge area which is a 
uh, area that many people who live in that area, you can walk these high uh, train tracks that are on this old abandoned trellis and walk around that area. And many in that community do just that. What I find very I interesting though, is for I them to be murdered at the particular time that they chose to take this walk on uh, the 13th, uh, they were dropped off by their parents at 1.49 No, PM they weren't. By 2. They were yeah. dropped off by the older sister. Yeah, older sister. But again, she's very new to this. She's I very give her new. The yeah, I give her the I'm benefit of it. the doubt. Yeah. 13 p.m. The killer had them in his sights and was ordering them dies down the hill. We know this because there was a video, a video that was taken by the girls. Again, we went through this earlier. We don't actually know if it is a video or if it's a compilation of photos, but we do know from articles at the time that the video and the audio are completely separate. Uh, but yeah, and it... It does look like a series of photos that were taken very quickly, not a a video, per se. Yeah, I mean, I have that function as well. I mean, uh, on my phone, I think. I, I assume teenagers know this better than I do. But going from photo, then I have to do all the things to go to video, and then I have to press play. If you just want to sneak something, you take photos. Who's that guy? He looks suspicious. Click, 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 click. Well, and it looked like the things that I've seen come out so far, it looks like she was capturing Abby taking her first walk across the bridge and he happened mm -hmm. to be behind her. Yeah, so I don't so. know. I, I don't know that it was a specific like this mm -hmm. guy is creepy. It just well, happened that he was in the frame, too. Yeah, I don't know. They they really have been so tight lipped about everything mm. that it's mm. conjecture all the way around. Yeah. But that will come out in I because if they have the photos, they have the metadata and they can show were they photos, was it a video, and exactly how far apart was the photos yeah. and the audio. Because if it's seconds, okay. If it's minutes, whole other story. Yeah, because, because then Bridge really Guy may not even be associated. No. And we don't know what other photos are on there. We only know these photos. Because that's all that is released. But I do think if there were more, the defense would have brought a motion about it. Uh, or put it up in the Frank's motion or something like that. But yeah. until trial, we don't know. And we will probably not know during trial because your goal, no electronics, no video. I do believe even audio, it will be recorded, but it will not be audio live out to the public. She will close that thing down. And I agree with Sean at Potentially Criminal. She does it because she doesn't want her complete incompetence shown to the world. Yeah, the only ironic thing is she was one of the judges that fought for Indiana courts to have streaming. <laughs> yeah, isn't that ironic? <laughs> she kind of regrets that. We have to get some Alanis Morissette on here. Yeah. And I don't buy her reasoning that she is protecting Richard Alla at all, because no. the defense says, please, show this trial to the world yeah and sal and i are gonna have to have a freaking fundraiser to get the transcripts because yeah it, the five pages are like five per page that's just yeah. what in the actual are you using golden gelfling that's, blood yeah but at <laughs> least if they record the audio you can at least the day after or a couple of days after or end of the week or something. I don't know. I really don't know. It'll depend on if she seals it until the end of the trial. That I don't too. know if you can do that. She probably can and she probably will. 
very astutely taken. On this video also, at least according to one affidavit, the word gun was spoken. So from there, many have come to believe that the individual who said guys down the hill had a gun. And that's why the girls made a comment. One of the girls made a comment. They're ordered down that hill and they're murdered not far from that bridge. And then their bodies are actually found on the land of a person named Ron Logan. Now, today, what I want to do is I want to go over the affidavits of the individual that currently stands accused of the crime. And he has asked for a speedy trial. He's going to trial and we're all going to be probably not watching because this judge likely will not allow any cam cameras, any tweeting, any cellular devices in the courtroom. But we're going to be watching it uh, from afar and listening to the news reports because individuals are allowed to come in uh, as a public and the media. So we're going to be listening to their thoughts and impressions from what happened. I want to first talk about the affidavit that charges Richard Allen. Richard Allen is sitting right now in a maximum security prison in Indiana. Now, for those who may be less familiar with uh, true crime and incarceration and you know how it all works, when we say someone's in jail, that typically refers to a county jail. And typically that means either they have gotten a sentence that's a year or less, or they are awaiting criminal trial proceedings. In all instances that I've ever known about and that experts will tell you they know about, unless a person is in jail and attempts escape or attempts to kill somebody or attempts to hurt a guard or something like that, that's where individuals charged with a crime are housed. Why? Because jails have facilities where they can meet with their lawyers. They have little conference rooms. They have interview rooms. They have access to phones. They have access to pads now. Uh, they have televisions. Um, they can often go to church. They can order vegan diets. They have the ability to have a much more relaxed incarceration situation than a maximum security. A maximum security, you're in your cell 23 hours a day if you are in lockup that provides for that. Uh, they call it the shoe. It's basically a special housing unit. And the reason that they put people in the shoe is because they are either people who are dangerous to others or that they're concerned that others will try to harm them. In this case, Richard Allen needs to be protected because he's a high profile inmate. He is being accused of this unsolved crime, if you will, that had been going on for years of the malicious and just horrible brew murder of these two little girls. So inmates know that they want to be famous. So they may try to hurt Richard Allen. In a maximum security facility, there's not even bars. It's a door. You're housed in a small cell about nine by 11 feet by yourself, 23 hours a day. You're let out uh, just for uh, basically rec time. There's a little slot in your door where you're fed. There's no facilities to meet with your attorneys because most people there are already convicted. And that's the whole point I quickly want to sidebar on is that whether Richard Allen is guilty or innocent, he should be housed the same way everyone who has not been convicted yet is housed in a jail for the reasons I just named. This is an issue that is very upsetting to me. You can see my passion. It's just wrong pre-conviction. I just wanted to get that out of the way because it does come into play with a couple of things we're going to cover. So let's look at his affidavit. The strongest point of his affidavit is that there is an unspent round, which was found purportedly two to three feet from where victims Abby and Libby were found on Ron Logan's property. Now, let me tell you why this is so important. It's important because initially it wasn't found. And then later it was found. That made me wonder, was it buried? Was it hidden? Had it been there a while? What was the situation regarding this live bullet? Meaning it wasn't shot, it was live, the full bullet and the casing. Secondarily, uh, they conducted a search warrant at the home of Richard Allen five years later, and they recovered the gun, uh, P226 Sig Sauer uh, 40 caliber. And that gun, when they cycled that gun, there are markings from the ejector and from the extractor that are used to eject a casing from a bullet that were found on the casing that was found on the ground. They compared that with his gun when they... No, I believe that is only example pictures. Uh, oh, okay. Because yeah, because they haven't released any of this. So these. I are was just like, wow, she pictures. really does have an in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in addition to this is 
conspiracy theory, whatever. But they had the crime scene for days. During yes. those days, they interviewed uh, the first uh, of the Odinists. Yes. Then they released, according to the defense, they released it for a full day. Then the same day, the other Odinist was interviewed. They sealed down the crime scene again, and then they found the bullet. Does it matter? I don't know. It's just a very weird circumstance. And here's the thing. They found this bullet, and then five years later, they somehow couldn't exclude it, matched it, whatever. How many rounds had Mr. Allen shot through that pistol during those five years? We don't know. But it does comes with a little bit of wear and tear. How can you re even remotely match after those years? I don't know. I'm not a toolmark guy. Why I'm not a toolmark guy? Because it's a shit science. Well, it also calls into question. Richard Allen, I think, talked to the um, DNR, Department of Natural Resource Officer, I believe two days after the incident yeah. or on the on either the 17th or the 19th. He gave them his time period. He gave them everything that said he might have been there during the time. Why yeah. didn't they go right then to look at his his weapons? I mean, yeah. or they say they, they mispiled it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That wouldn't surprise me because they fucked up everything else the first 70 days. So why not this yeah. as well? But that True. doesn't mean Mr. Allen is uh, guilty. It doesn't mean... He will no. be found not guilty. It's just, in my opinion, and let me do this. Sometimes the prosecution has to admit to the public the police fucked up too much. We can't solve this. It would be an injustice with this piece of garbage investigation to even arrest somebody. These are the guys who did it. I will not protect them. Off they fuck. They will, should never be police again. But yeah. that didn't happen, obviously. No. <laughs> they did that same performance and a round ejected. It, according to their tool mark expert, it showed the same markings. This will be contested, I'm sure, by a defense analyst, a defense expert. No, it won't. Maybe. No, because maybe. the judge denied Richard Allen's defense funds for experts. And this yeah. is why on this Friday, uh, Friday the 5th of April, fundraiser up Absolutely. with the wheel of regrets for because... Uh, there has been a, there is a fundraiser to fund Richard Allen's defense experts. So I will be doing that Friday, the 5th of April. Absolutely. Put my liver to the test and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be on this Friday. Uh, yeah. Because that is just horrible to see yeah, the judge I... denying the defense funds because according to the defense the state has gotten around 2.1 million in their investigation that's the prosecution that's the investigation there are 2.1 million dollars in 340,000 of those are for their experts and Richard Allen gets zero that's just vile. And it, I mean, it really does not give the impression that she is wanting a fair and, and balanced trial. No, I no, mean, no, no, no. She, it, it is full mask off at this point. Yeah. It is. Uh, yeah, she old, went full you know. Cruella de Vil on this one. 
Yeah, and and the fact that we still don't know the outcome of the March eighteenth hearing. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, just a lot that, of uh, that is. It's only a few of the court docket denied this, approved this, whatever. But, but we don't really know what was said because we also know that there are reports about uh, an officer or FBI agent or something that spent hours testifying. And we know nothing of it because it's all sealed. Yeah, it's just, again, had the state, had the investigation wanted it to if they had decreased. all the evidence they would be screaming it off the yes. rooftops they would have shown everything absolutely because yeah, yeah but let's keep listening about this tool mark on tool marks and we'll have to see how that plays out it's very different when a casing is ejected from a bullet and it isn't done by firing the bullet. You can imagine why the energy, the energy of firing a bullet, those markings and that movement of the extractor and of the ejector would make much crisper markings on that casing. When well, you manually do it, it's just this amount of force um, that would cause the ejection. So it's not near as violent of a presentation to the extractor and ejector onto that casing. So we'll see, mm -hmm. but that is the strongest piece of evidence. Again, it had those two concerning points. Was this a bullet that was buried or was it a bullet that should have been seen in the initial crime scene investigation? Second to that, according to the affidavit, he said he was there. Richard Allen puts himself there now. He actually put himself there uh, right after uh, the girls were found murdered. He approached a uh, an officer. Uh, I believe he was. A I don't. Yeah. I mean, he came forward right after because they told him. Please come forward with any information. Yeah. Uh, but his information regarding when he was there does not align when the girls might have been abducted, if I remember yeah. correctly. It, it, you have to stretch it beyond parody in order for yeah. it to work. You have to make sure that a purple PT cruiser becomes a 19 or 2000. 12 you know ford focus so it, it stretches things you have yeah. to make it so that people that saw you know sketch guy one and sketch guy two saw the same person that is now richard yeah. allen yeah and uh, for you who don't know what's a pt cruiser this is a PT cruiser. There's no way you can mistake a PT cruiser for anything else than a PT cruiser. True. No, it won't happen. This is one of the <laughs> ugliest cars ever made. And they stopped making it. And it's a crap car. It breaks down all the time. It has a very bad reputation. And it's ugly as fuck. And you can't mistake it for any other car. <laughs> Let's see, I am ashamed focus. to say I loved the PT Cruiser. I wanted one. I wanted one black one with flames on it because mm -hmm. only I would go to a, a garage or a parking lot and pick out a Pinto as what I like. So do not go with any of most car picks because apparently I'll pick an Edsel. <laughs> Let's see here if I can find a good from the same angle, maybe? Come on. Why can't I find some? There should be one. Uh, yeah. Well, roughly the same angle. This is a Ford Focus. Yeah. You're, you're not going to mix up a purple This PT is a PT Cruiser. Cru you, you, you I, I don't want to uh, be a misogynist, but oh, sorry. <laughs> Even I wouldn't mix that up, and yeah. I'm terrible with cars. It'd be like, oh yeah. my gosh, my favorite PT Cruisers over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't mix it up, and maybe a half blind wo wo woman, but n n no. There's no way you can mistake a PT Cruiser for anything else. But uh, she was talking about uh, Toolmark 
that was a good point she made there. If it's just cycled, that much less force. Yeah. That's actually much a less good point. definitive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I it is much. That. No. We are not hmm. former FBI either. And uh, somebody in the chat right now is writing, that's what former feds would say. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and to that yeah. person in chat, I tend I tend to go more Dale Gribble and Rusty Shackleford, but we're letting her talk because yeah. you know we're just seeing how she feels. Yeah, and uh, uh, feds usually are trying to be invisible, not noticeable. That's not me. <laughs> 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 you see you see me when I come down the street. Uh. Conservation officer and told him, hey, listen, I know they wanted us to come forward because there had been an announcement out. If you were ever in the Monon High Bridge area on the 13th of February, you need to come forward and tell us. And that's what he did. And that report was written up and perused by law enforcement, the lead investigator. I can tell you in a command post setting or in any setting when you're a lead investigator, everything comes through you. There's no clerk that makes the decisions. There's no, even uh, an agent or an officer that, it's not that they're below you, but they're below you on that case when you're the case agent, when you're the detective assigned. And everything goes through you. The buck stops with you, so it must go through you. And it was decided at that point that it would be filed away, that it wasn't relevant. Years later, about five years later, that report was re-examined and I have always said, there is a reason for that. This wasn't, in my opinion, out of the blue although law enforcement seemed very shady when they tried to say that, oh, well, we just thank you to this clerk for finding this. No, it had been there. And they also tried to blame the FBI. Uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, the buck stops with that detective, the lead detective. But in any event, let's call your attention now to this affidavit and the fact that they interviewed Richard Allen and he himself said again, yeah, I was there. It was my day off. He was worked at CVS Pharmacy as you know the photo technician. He been working there for years. He lived in a, you know, a nice middle-class home in Delphi. Typical guy, you know, went to bars at night with his wife. Did she just show a pic of her daughter? Of of his daughter? That's gross. Yeah, I'm going to edit that out. That's okay, not coming thank in. You. Yeah. I'm glad that we do this as a recording and not live. Yeah. Because that, that, yeah. Uh, Miss Coffin Daffer, yeah. if you see this, um, I wouldn't advise you to show where they lived or pictures yeah. of family members. That's uh, not good. No, and and even if he does get found guilty, they might not have known anything. This is exactly. just as devastating on their lives. They were mm -hmm. basically run out of town. Yeah, you know the the house is sold, and they they are not they are no longer there. And no. uh, kind of just your everyday Joe, never in trouble legally before or after the crime. I think these are important points. But in the affidavit, he puts himself there, and he talks about being on his stock ticker, not really paying attention to much. He talks about looking at fish over the edge in the water. I wish we could hear the whole recorded conversation, and hopefully, hopefully they recorded it because we know now that many of the recordings that took place in this very time period that they were conducting the whole Delphi investigation, they accidentally recorded over the recordings that they made of individuals. They didn't record it over. Uh... They, if I remember correctly, one of the sergeant investigators, one of the cops, when he took that and put it into there, he f somehow they managed to scramble everything of sorts. And now since, okay, they might, may or may not have recovered some of it, but ne no audio. And the defense asked the pros uh, prosecution, and uh, but you at least have who did you interview and when? And the answer to that is no. Ooh, apparently not. Why would we write things down? And I, either they are this 
incompetent or whoever is in charge is lying. There's the only two options. Either he shouldn't be a cop or he shouldn't be a cop. Now, That's the one the thing that options. she does does not bring up about, you know, there was a reason that this was re re-looked at. Um, timing wise, mm. uh, I believe Legette uh, was voted in as sheriff. Mm. I think like 90 days after Richard Allen was um, put in jail. It was a very close period of time where he was <laughs> running for sheriff and not doing so hot. So yeah. that is total speculation. That is, mm. you know, there could have been a multitude of different reasons. Mm. They went back and looked at Richard Allen. But for me, that timeline has always be, yeah. been very shady. Yeah. More or less, we need to arrest somebody who was there. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it sounds improbable, but it has happened all over the United States before, which is the risk with electing your cops. They will try to be re-elected or elected or whatever. Yes. And I'm not a fan of that at all. <coughs> they interviewed in the Delphi murder case of these two girls. This is egregious. It's absolutely unacceptable. I can tell you from somebody who conducted interviews, if you recorded them, it went on tape and that original tape was then put in what we called Elsher electronic surveillance, filed with an Elsher clerk, a file clerk. We had copies made of whatever electronic surveillance was made. And then we had it for our investigative purposes. We would give it to the prosecutor for them to have a copy of. And then also we would give it to the defense for them to have a copy of. But the original was always, always, always maintained in lockup. The fact they didn't do this is egregious and a sign of their poor and lax standards. And probably a little sub note why <laughs> this took forever to solve. I'll bring to your attention the FBI <laughs> did get involved in the case later. She's like, y'all are dumb, which yeah. we've all been saying. Yeah, I mean, that is uh, 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 FBI speak for you f forking uh, neurons. Well, yeah, but it, I think this disturbs her on a very personal level. Mm. The fact that this was so shoddily done. I mean, mm. I think she's with us. A lot of us. Why did this take five years if you essentially had Richard Allen... Um, Holder and Westfall all within the first four to five days to week. Yeah. You know, yeah. you had these multitude of suspects. Yeah. And nothing happened for five years, and you give us two different sketches. Yeah. It, it just it, it's maddening. And I'm I'm glad that she's showing, you know, a little bit of of rebuke to these people. Sorry for the pause, Miss Coffin <laughs> Forever to <laughs> solve. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I'm horrible at pausing. It's very suitable oh, at times, but uh, yeah. I'll bring to your attention, the FBI did get involved in the case late when they were finally asked to by Delphi, realizing this is way over our expertise. They brought them on about a month later. Of course, a search warrant was done, which again, this should have been done day one on February 14th of the landowner. And by then, of course, likely any evidence was gone. But I want to concentrate back to, excuse me for digressing, Richard Allen, why he's locked up. What is the probable cause? There is also uh, in the probable cause affidavit, they talk a lot about different witnesses that, you know, they're trying to say saw him. This is the problem. There are various contradictory witness accounts that exist Thank throughout you the probable cause affidavit, including clothing descriptions seen and not seen, including descriptions related to height, related to gray hair, brown hair, exactly the kind of jacket, windbreaker, not a windbreaker. Absolutely. That's it. Investigative note witnesses described the vehicle parked at the former 
CPS building as a PT cruiser, small SUV, or smart car. Investigators okay. believe those descriptions are similar in nature to a 2016 Ford Focus. <laughs> you know, as a not car person, even I call bullshit. Okay, there is. Look, I am. I am not a car person. I mean, I will say like, oh, it was purple. But as a lover of the PT Cruiser and perhaps the only one alive on the planet, there is no way I would ever say a Ford Focus. This is a smart car. <laughs> a toddler Can shoe, if you will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a berry picker. If you put, if you open the trunk and put a handle on top, it's a berry picker. <laughs> This is like Just... five feet long. I mean, how can an investigator with a straight face claim that this is resemblance of a Ford Focus? This, how can a judge this, with a PT straight Cruiser, face read the, P the probable cause affidavit and say, you know what, it sounds like this guy could have, might could have done something. I mean, if you... Again, I'm not trying to be a misogynist here, but if you are a guy who have a car and you can't tell a PT Cruiser, a smart car, and a Ford Focus apart, you might need a rainbow flag. <laughs> okay, I went there as Send well. Send so, all so... your comments to Nicholas. <laughs> I, send all your hate PT Cruiser comments to me. Send yeah. all your, you know, women can't tell cars to, to Nicholas. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm going to get so much crap for this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm used to it. So <laughs> I am glad that she's zeroing in because the probable mm -hmm. cause affidavit has never made sense to me. No. No. How it it's, even got off the ground. How they even got a search warrant based on this. This is evidence for me of a judge rubber stamping because, again, listen to this. Investigator notes witnesses described a vehicle parked at a former CPS building as a PT Cruiser or a small SUV or a smart car. That tells me that's the description you have at least three witnesses who gave description of three different cars and none of them was a 2016 ford focus this is so shoehorning anything in and it's ridiculous it's... yeah it I mean, had they just said with a probable cause affidavit, and I don't know that this as a non-lawyer, if they had just said, you know, he said he was there during yeah. the time period we are concerned about, mm -hmm. you know, he did say that he might have clothes associated with the person that we thought, uh, you know, we'd like to search his house. I mean, that yeah. would be much more close to facts than all the rigmarole they put in the probable cause but I don't know how one writes a probable cause affidavit not being a, a cop, so. Yeah, <laughs> and if you go back on October 13, Richard Allen was interviewed again. It is 2022. He advised he was on, on the trace on that day. He stated he saw juvenile girls on the trace east of Freedom Bridge, and that he went on to the Manon, Manon High Bridge. Richard Allen further stated he went out onto the High Bridge to watch the fish. Later in the statement, he said he walked out to the first platform on the bridge. He stated he then walked back. So, but here's the thing. We don't know how many others were on that bridge. Because apparently yeah. you walk over that bridge in minutes. So is, if well, any time yeah. timing is off by 10 minutes, it, those could have been other girls. Yeah, I mean, it could have been anything. And that's, and it might not be, it might not have been as probable if the rest of the investigation weren't shit. True. Dark blue pants, 
genes. It, it's so contradictory, and I think it's going to be problematic. In addition, there are juveniles that were interviewed. What are they going to say when they are on the stand? How is their recollection going to be? You can see. If, there, if the witnesses of those cars were juveniles and they're seven years later, they are, I mean, now they are closing in on their mid-twenties. I yeah. hardly remember my teens. Yeah, I think that the people that saw the cars were older because they were drivers. Yeah. And I think that there were some shenanigans with the person that saw one of the cars because she allegedly saw Richard Allen come out muddy and bloody. Although in her statement, it said muddy only not yeah. bloody. Um, yeah. That's... So I think the people that saw the cars were both adult people in driving cars, but the kind of contradictory, like he was tallish or he was shortish or he was wearing a, a denim jacket. Yeah. He was wearing but, a ski mask. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of. Yeah, but this was uh, no school day. Yeah. People people like to be there. Yeah, it was and a nice, it, beautiful day in February. We don't get many yeah. of those in, in Indiana. Yeah. And a person between five, six and six, two, with a goatee, yeah, congratulations. Welcome to Indiana. That's most Pretty of much. adults males. I mean, you know, with a Carhartt jacket. I mean, the problem with the probable cause affidavit is that you could put a firearm, a Carhartt jacket, and um, knives basically on any probable cause affidavit on anyone in the state of Indiana and come back with those items. It's so yeah, non-specific. I, mean, I mean, Tara, who doesn't have a knife? That's, I mean... Now, if they also say, oh, he wore a medieval helmet. Yeah, okay, you might have something. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. You are just likely are to find issues. these things. There's issues where it looks like things are sort of cut and put together and woven together to try to give some sort of consistency in terms of what these witnesses saw, only it's not consistent. And let's not forget the description of the vehicle. The vehicle described was a smart car type vehicle that was parked, <laughs> attributed to <laughs> Richard Allen. Uh, Again, that's not a Ford Focus 20. No, no, no. Uh, also, uh, they described uh, a boxy type vehicle. That's definitely well. Richard not a Ford Allen Focus. owned at that time a black Ford Focus. You can see it doesn't look anything like a smart car. Okay, so that's his actual car. Okay, yeah, folks. I'm Vote <laughs> one for is this, does this look like a PT Cruiser, a smart car, <laughs> a box like car, or not? <laughs> Press one if uh, you think, yeah, that looks like a smart car, or a PT Cruiser, or a boxed car. <laughs> Press two if you have a normally functioning brain. <laughs> I know this is a yeah. recording, but I I want oh to see gosh. those answers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's no I, way. They no, can... but I, I I am glad that she is is looking at this yeah. and seeing this because it feels yeah. like I have been shouting into the void that this yeah. is the dumbest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. You know, for yeah, a year and, uh, now. Now, she doesn't go as far as uh, we have gone, and not as well, much yeah. in depth. But then again, we have <laughs> what, what do we have like 15 hours of content? Oh, yeah, together, and then you have <laughs> yes. lots. Another, this is her, yeah. she has uh, she's 37 minutes in total, then. yeah, but she still <laughs> hits the same marks. This yeah. is stupid, she just doesn't say it out loud as much uh, yes 
or any other kind of boxy car. I think this is going to be problematic. Witness identification and witness statements, especially after all these years, and especially because I think there's going to be other witness statements that are contradictory that weren't listed in the probable cause affidavit, they are the most problematic type of testimony. And I think this is going to come out uh, to be a significant issue during trial. That's your probable cause that- Yeah, uh, and during the trial, when these witnesses show up, they have now for the past two years been told it's Richard Allen. Yeah. Can and they really- yeah, these are people who live in the area and everything, probably knows the parents. Or yeah. will they actually keep being inconsistent or will they adapt their testimony to everything the prosecution the has put says. out? Yeah. And will the defense be skillfully able to um, go with their past statements and really because there's an art to being able to kind of impeach someone without looking mm. like an a-hole. Yeah. So hopefully that if they do decide to change their statements to coincide with the state, the defense is skillful enough to say, well, but in your first, we can, you know, agree that your memory was fresher right at the time. And this is what you said at the time. Correct. You know, and mm. just kind of go through like that and not yeah. look like a dick. But it's it's a balancing yeah, yeah. act. Yeah, and eyewitness testimony isn't reliable to begin with. And in my opinion, and in most conducted research, not reliable at all. No. And as I heard in another trial I covered, well, when I think about it, it became clearer. No, 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 then you have added things. Yeah. yeah. But let's keep listening to Ms. Coffin Duffer. Has landed Richard Allen in a maximum security prison. That's it. For And he was arrested in October. He's been there well over a year and, you know, going on four or five months now under those conditions. Since he was locked up, he, according to prosecutors, confessed to murdering Abby and Libby. He, according to them, on jailhouse recordings, every time you speak to somebody, if you're in, in jail or in prison, it's going to be recorded. Uh, but supposedly, he told his wife, I believe on four occasions, and his mom on one occasion that he killed the girls. If he gave details, if he gave his reasoning why, if he uh, provided information in and around those where he seemed intelligent, where he seemed reasonable. In other words, he wasn't losing his mind. That would be the linchpin. Not not what was in the probable cause affidavit. I don't even know if you could uh, really glean probable cause to search somebody's house from this information, but they did, and they did search it. These confessions are going to be so important. They'll decide his guilt or innocence in this case, is my belief. If he sounds like a rambling, babbling, idiot, like he's lost his mind, like he's questioning whether he killed them. That's going to be a problem for the prosecution. Recall too, he had lost a huge amount of weight. Defense team said he was literally eating paper. He was not doing well. He's not doing well. Wasn't eating, etc. If those are the conditions that he gave his confession in, we'll see uh, if this is going to be, be believed. That and being assigned God with yes. Odin is patches. And being in fear for his family's life. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that we can overstate the amount of of basic torture mm. this man was under. I mean, he was locked by himself 23 hours a day with Odinist guards who seemed to delight in denying him, you yeah. know, recreation, who, who showers. Who tried to record his conversations with uh, his lawyers, according to his lawyers, who yeah. had doors opened, tried to eavesdrop. I mean, there's yeah, it so... just seems mm. like the normal rule of, of law just kind of has broken down with this entire case. Yeah. 
by a jury. Now, I want to talk about Ron Logan. And I want you to recall, if you will, that the prosecution team said from one of the very first hearings, listen, we think there's somebody else that was involved. They said that. It's on record. The prosecutor said that. Yeah, so maybe it was Ron Logan. When the FBI got involved in this case a month after the murders, the FBI prepared a probable cause affidavit to search the premises of Ron Logan. And they found probable cause to not only believe uh, that there could be indicia of the crime there, but also to believe that Ron Logan was involved in committing their murder. Let me tell you the evidence they had, because it's pretty strong. One, he falsified an alibi. He not only lied to investigators where he were was point blank, he got somebody else to lie for him. And they later came out and said, yes, I lied. He got me to lie. And so all of that came out to lie about where he was at the time of the murders. This is absolutely huge. What people who are in Logan's court want to say is, well, he was driving on a suspended license and he didn't want anybody to know. No, he did that often. He drove on a suspended license. You don't go to those links and it happens to be just at the time of this murder to create an alibi and get somebody to lie for you. Number two, these, these crimes, the murder of both of these girls, this took time. Clothes were removed. Bodies were reclothed. The murder took place in one place. The bodies were put in another. The bodies were covered. The murder, it's not what happened when their clothes were off. Uh, by all indications, they weren't sexually assaulted. But I will tell you, when there's a murder involved with two little girls by a man, it's sexual in nature when you have their clothes removed. I shudder to think. But the bottom line is, it took time. When you're going to commit a murder like this, you have to be someplace you know, someplace you trust. Ron Logan was on his own property. I would submit that that is key in, in my belief. Was Richard Allen as familiar? Maybe so. Maybe he went down there all the time. Maybe they were very close friends. Many people believed he was bridge guy, including people who knew Ron Logan. In other words, listening to the tape. Yeah, and uh, by the way, not one for five years said, wait, that looks like Richard Allen. Oh, wait, that's, that sounds like Richard Allen. Not one. That's my big thing. He was, it's not like he was hiding. He was at CBS. You would go get yeah. your pictures done. Hell, he did pictures for the vigil. Are yeah. you telling me that no one thought, mm. hey, that this looks guy like and this guy? Yeah. Never once did it pop up in anyone's head. Yeah. And never changed anything. He went to work, did his work, went home to his family, did normal stuff. No change before or after. And either yeah. he is a sociopath of a serial killer nature, or he didn't do it. I mean... Now, we haven't heard all the evidence, and we will never will, because the uh, investigators uh, erased the first 70 <laughs> days of evidence. And yeah. with this, if he's pronounced not guilty, nobody will ever be convicted of this. Because I don't, I... the prosecution, the investigators, they all screwed up so royally that if they can't spin this prosecution into a guilty verdict, nobody will ever. Had I... they conducted a proper investiga investigation, had they not thrown out the FBI after a few months? Because the FBI apparently was on the Odinist thingy. Yes. And I, then they I do... threw... I do wonder about her her belief about Ron Logan. I understand yeah. it's his property, but I still think that an older gentleman mm. would not be able to do that. I think even if you had him and Richard Allen together, I don't know that they would have been able to accomplish it as quietly and as quickly, as efficiently as it would have needed to be done. Yeah. But I that's mean, even just if it took my thought time, pattern. It's still a short spheric guy and an older guy without yeah i mean and, and then if 
if this is Ron Logan, if if he's really a sexual sadist and he's been, you know, escalating over the years, this wouldn't have been his first hunt. The way this mm. was executed, for yeah. lack of better terms, I mean, left very little mm. behind, if anything. Yeah. You know, and I, I it, don't know if he has been connected to if they ever checked his DNA for anything. They yeah. apparently they didn't collect anything from him. So no, so I don't know if it's more just a loyalty to the FBI and the FBI said he was a probable suspect and that's mm. what she's going on. Mm. I just Ron Logan yeah. never piqued my interest. Yeah. I, I understand it. It is suspicious. It is his property. He had the opportunity. My, it's his it's his motive. I don't know. He might have. We don't know. Here's the thing, and that's the crucial part. We don't know. Nobody knows because no. the, the investigators were shit. Pretty much. <laughs> Looking at how he walked, they thought it was Ron Logan. But by the same token, now many people believe Richard Allen fits that profile. I have seen everything from bridge guy was over six foot tall, end of story to no, he was about five foot six tall, five foot seven tall. Well, just to you know, be clear, Ron Logan was over six foot tall and uh, Richard Allen is under five foot five. <laughs> so it's a huge difference, six, seven inches in height differentiation. It's just gigantic. So I'll be very interested because I saw experts unequivocally say it was Ron Logan. And now I think we're going to see expert unequivocally say it's Richard Allen. I think that piece will likely be a bit of a wash. But in the affidavit, the FBI expert who listened to the tape basically said the voice could not be dismissed as not being Ron Logan's. Not that it was Ron Logan's because the FBI always does this when it comes to voice exemplars, but just that it's consistent with and could not be uh, dismissed as not being him. His former girlfriend said he was abusive. He was sexually abusive. It was a horrible situation. He beat her in the last instance uh, she was with him. He hit her and she drove away her head bleeding. She describes a horrible human, a horrible man who was abusive to women. We don't have that on the Richard Allen. Richard Allen's been married. His wife still stands Can by his side. We quick. also have to me. This is such. Okay. There's a difference between someone who gets, who's awful domestic violence wise, mm. then to graduate to a, a ritualized murder. That just, yeah. that seems like a leap mm. to me. I mean, yeah, again, you don't see Cletus. The leap is even greater when it comes to Richard Allen because he has shown none of these no. tendencies whatsoever. And it, uh, so at least I just don't uh, Mr. Logan logic, has, yeah. yeah. I understand her logic. And would you compare, if you do a comparison between here's Logan, here's yeah. Alan, who is more probable? I would put Logan there. I, I would too. I just, it, it's a very big leap for me. Yeah. If, if these things happen, then he was a douchebag human. Mm. And, you know, may he reap what he sowed. Yeah. But it's a, it's a far cry from a guy who engages in domestic violence to a very staged, very risky, well thought out crime scene. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's a huge piece of information. We know Ron Logan's phone was proximal. That's the use, word used, which means near where the bodies were found. And this is in the evening. I think there's three different pings of his phone where he's down there proximal to the bodies. That to me is a oh, that I didn't know. I did not know that, but how close is proximal? Because again, they were on his property. If everyone yeah. was searching, I mean, yeah. and he was trying to do his part to help search. Mm. That yeah, that, I don't know. Pro and yeah. again, what is proximal? Like within yeah. thirteen feet? I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't know because Richard says he was there. Probably, uh, yeah, around, but probably before, depends on yeah. how, but did it ping an hour later? That's what I'm interested in, because the yeah. phone, unless you turn the phone off, it will continue to ping, and if it doesn't, yeah. 
Does it ping somewhere else, Mr. Allen's phone? Well, yeah, does it show that he went back to CDS? I mean... Yeah. There's so much in this we don't know and probably will never find out until no. after the trial because Judge, Judge Gould is a uh, C-word. Pretty much. Huge issue because for me, I love the evidence that can't speak, but that speaks for itself and that's forensic evidence. And what makes it worse is we don't have Richard Allen's phone down there. Did Richard Allen kill Abby and Liberty? Oh, so we don't have Richard Allen's phone down there. Where they found in the, the girls. Evening. Because, yeah, in the yeah. evening. Huh. Yeah, because if they it's, took time, yeah. how much time do they allege it took? Because they were found the morning after, if I remember well, correctly. And would you would assume maybe they would come back to see or to to watch over the search to find out if they found them yeah but it, it's still a little it could be argued by defense attorneys that that is his home property and yeah. being proximal to the bodies i mean they were only yeah. what 100 to 400 yards from his house so yeah. he could have just been in his backyard thinking gosh i hope they find yeah. those kids and yeah. It, it is proximal. One, one thing I'm wondering about is that uh, is that a pine forest or is it a birch forest? Is it a leafy one? Because if it's a leafy one, then there shouldn't be much leaves. And I think it's a fairly leafy one. I'll have to go up there. I'm not going on that bridge. You can't pay no. me. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be interesting to see if you could find uh, Google Maps from early spring. Yeah. How much leaf there is, because if it's a, even if it's a hundred yards, it should have caused commotion. You would have thought. I I don't know. That's yeah. a lot of this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, and th that's the thing with this. It we we can only speculate because there's only speculation to ha to give. Yeah, and I do like her having a fresh take because yeah. I kind of dismissed um, Ron Logan as just you know an older person. But I mean, some of the things that she is bringing up, you know, I'm like, okay, well, yeah. maybe there was a reason the FBI wanted to look into him. Yeah. Other than you know, FBI yeah. is look into uh, to exclude or look in to include, yeah. and uh, they never did. Well, the FBI wanted, but I do believe they never got the opportunity because they were thrown I, off. Or thrown yeah, off I the think case. so. Be German. I don't know. Did Ron Logan? He's deceased now. He'll never be charged, and we may never know. What I worry about is we'll never know who really killed Abby and Libby, and that's a disservice. But let's hope they, they got it right. Let's hope these confessions are legitimate and valid from the standpoint of law enforcement being right, because if they're wrong in this deal, they have incarcerated somebody for months on end at a maximum security facility. They have given the victim families hope that finally they know who killed uh, their little ones. And a community, if it's not Richard Allen, will still be at unrest because that means there's still a vicious murderer out. If you enjoyed this episode, I hope you subscribe. Hit the like button. It's all. Yeah, uh, you know, I will. I will have her the link in the description below when this comes out. I'm uh, I'm pleasantly uh, yeah. surprised that she's yeah. she's hitting on a lot of points that you and I have made a long yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, I agree, and uh, I do think she's a bit off on some of it, but as you said, uh, much has to do with the confession, how he articulates it, if he gave details, yes. because if it is just him, I might as well confess to it, so, so this will be over with. I might as well, if it's that kind of a confession, gone. 
Well, that does make me wonder if that's why the state is so hot and bothered to get his mental health records yeah. to show that, you know, well, um, no, he was only like slightly mentally depressed. Yeah. That's it's mm. that's my wonder is okay, maybe that's why they were so they're still so hot and bothered. They've, yeah. you know, changed their mind. Yeah. Because I'm guessing we're going to hear a broken a broken man say, I, look, I, I just, I did it. I want you guys to be safe. Leave, please. I did mm. it. I did, leave. I, yeah. That's what I'm thinking we're going to mm. hear. But that's... Yeah. Until the trial and people who are in the courtroom can report on it. And we need to listen to several sources because there will be sources yes. there who will... I'm not saying fabricate, but they hear what they want to hear, even in mass media. Oh, yeah. So, I hope, well, so we need to listen yeah. to more than one source from inside that courtroom. Yeah, and depending on how insanely crowded it is, I can see if I can get in there for one day. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's also, you know, I want to try to get with Sal and see if we can pull you know, at least audio recordings or something at the end of the week that yeah. we can do that. Yeah, but, because this, this will be a three-week trial from uh, May 13th to uh, May 31st. She's conducting this trial over Labor Weekend. She is a dumb butt. I think we've yeah. already established that. Yeah, I mean, seriously. And she's doing six days a week, so Monday through Saturday, oh. and Labor Weekend. Yeah, and they, if they close on, you know, the Thursday before Labor Day weekend, I'm sure that the jury would not be tempted to, you know, oh, I say give them a guilty just so they could go home. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, but that was our reaction to Jennifer Coffin Daffer and her take mm -hmm. on the Delphi case. I am pleasantly surprised. Uh, she hit, Me too. as you said, uh, a lot of the points we were have been making for months. Since yes. the, when did we start? Uh, August, September of last year, we did our first episode. I think so. Together. I think yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. So it's refreshing <laughs> to see from her eyes, who we know yes. from other cases or is very pro-state, yes. question this much. Because yeah. I assume when she questions this much, we are not far off when we question more or less everything. <laughs> and it well, was interesting yeah, to hear, yeah. uh, hear about the uh, cha -ching, uh the force the, needed um, to uh, cycle yeah. the bullet. That was interesting. Yeah. I, because I've been dismissive, dismissive of it as a shit science for many, many years. But yes. Even people who do rely on it says that's not that important if it's just cycle. Yeah. Well, and, and again, she does bring up the flaw that, you know, it was found later. It was yeah. not found during the initial sh search, you know. And I'll bring up again that, you know, it's a common model of a firearm. A six hour is not, you know, like your grandpa's, you know, WW2 that he stole off some mm. guy wearing Hugo Boss and smuggled back into the country. I, no, mean, I mean, it's a common. Six hour is one of the most common guns. And here's the thing even if it's a six hour 366 or 356 or whatever the name is, but if they tested it against all the Sig Sauer's 9 millimeters, how many cannot, can they not exclude? Well, they and that's what I'm they wondering. They have to test more than that actual weapon. If the same degree is for all 9 millimeter Sig Sauer's, we can't exclude them. Well, then you have zero evidence. In yeah. My opinion. But yeah, that was our okay. reaction. Yeah. And uh, uh, I will have, have this up Tuesday, which is tomorrow. For okay, me, okay. At around <laughs> 
11 a.m. I want to say. I, was, yeah, I have to do an edit, yeah. uh, remove a photo. And, yeah, uh, that, that would be the only thing I would communicate to her. I think that the rest of it was good, but I think yeah. I would just maybe talk to her about putting up the doc. Because mm. I think both of us were like, oh, nope, no, mm. no. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to go. For you who watch this either on my channel or most channel, Thank you for being here. Hit the thumbs Thank up. You. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, yep. yeah, see you around. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.